Okay, let's um, show you some experiments uh, as a brief introduction to speed control in the eFortraining.com simulation package. So we'll ex ex select the free and the speed control example. And that loads our little circuit. And we'll see here two flow control valves. So they're meter out. They've got a check valve that closes when the flow comes out and uh, meters the flow through the restrictor on the way in. The check valve opens and the flow goes through the larger size of the check valve. <coughs> and uh, if we bring the cylinder back, we'll notice it's now speed controlled. Uh, it's moving more slowly because of the size of this orifice. Now, what we need to do is to, we'll just double click on that to freeze the cylinder. It still thinks it's moving, so we still get our flow rates. Um, and we can now change the size of the orifice because that's a little bit large so what I was doing was just taking the full flow from the pump and it wasn't actually controlling and you can see now we've uh, changed the flow rate to 5 litres a minute so we've got control of the flow rate by the size of this orifice so essentially that's all it is it's a, a hole and you've got pressure drop across the flow control valve and so that with the size of the hole gives you your flow rate now, one of the important things I just want to show is that this also depends on load because it's the pressure drop across the orifice. So if we change the load pressure, if we increase our pressure on this uh, rod, that changes the pressure. Well, it doesn't change the pressure there because we've got a pressure compensated pump that keeps its pressure, but it changes the pressure on this side. So what actually happens, we'll change the angle of the rod, so we'll bring our mass into play and if you watch here the uh, speed changes and that changes because the effective this is the effective pressure bore pressure from that load um, we make it just minus one on the annulus because we don't you can't really get negative pressures you don't suck things in hydraulics it all goes wrong if you try so uh, we've got an equivalent pressure here of being taken off the top of this so if we look at that valve, the pressure on the top now is 150 bar, so that's the pressure drop across it, the top minus the bottom. Um, if we change this and we we'll take it down again, put that back, we can see now we've got the larger 240 bar, and as we know, that's higher than our supply pressure of 175 because we've got the intensification from the different areas. So we've now got a different pressure and a different flow rate. Uh, that's all there is to it, really. Uh, it does get quite complicated to think about. You have to know your loads. As I said before, the most important thing is your load and how your load's changing over time, different days, um, because each time that load changes, changes the pressure drop and the speed of operation changes as well. Uh, there are valves, that pressure compensated valves, that, where that doesn't happen, but... We'll get to those later. So if you want to add your own loads in, add your own circuit, and you can um, set it up and see the effects, see what happens when when, and if your load changes. can be really important at startup, maintenance, commissioning, temperatures, all sorts of things. Uh, but I hope that gives you a little bit of a background, and then we can try some more. We're going to be adding more circuits and more examples over the next few months.